now that we have the second spread pretty much laid out and set up, except for the page numbers at the bottom, let's go ahead and move to page one. Now, I realized when we were messing with this at the beginning, uh, I did not set up the columns correctly on this. I should have actually had, let me show you. Let's go here to pages. Uh, so we had the spreads. So when we initially set up the margins and the columns, only one of these was selected. We actually needed all of these selected. So not a big deal. I'm just going to give you the numbers on what to do to fix this. So let's go ahead and change this down here at the bottom to page one. Let's go to layout. Let's go to margins and columns. So for this one, I'm going to go a little bit faster just so we can kind of get through this. Uh, and you'll have time to go and move on to the other pieces. First thing is I better slow down a little. <laughs> I've got to turn this link off. We're going to type in 21. I hit tab 29. I hit tab twice. So it'll move over to the inside. I'm going to do 20. I'm going to do 22. I'm going to do three columns and I'm going to do five millimeters for the gutter. All right. So we do not have the same fonts uh, that they used here. This is Helvetica. Uh, but what we're going to do is we'll use an approximation for it. So like I said, I'm not as worried about it being perfectly laid out because this is really just as a, it's like a, a thumbnail, but it's a digital version of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and we're going to start with taking this rectangle tool. And we are going to drag a rectangle over this entire thing. And if it didn't fit all the way, like I didn't get all the way over here, I'm gonna go ahead and snap that into place. Gonna check down here, that's in place. Gonna move over here, that's in place. And where the heck the rest of it go? There we go. And that looks good. Okay, so now again, just like we had the same issue with this one, we couldn't see the text because this is showing up uh, where it's covering the whole thing. I'm gonna click on it. And I'm going to just temporarily swap it. So now it's on the outside. And now that I'm thinking about it, let's actually do one extra, let's do one extra thing here just to be safe because I think we might run into some problems. Let's go to window and let's go to layers. And right here on layers, when I click next to this, this will show me the only thing that's on that layer right now on that page is the rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and lock it. There we go. Awesome. Okay, so now we can zoom in and we're going we're gonna to do this title, the revisit King Kong and this placeholder text. So in order to do this, what we're going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and click on the type tool. I'm going to hold down my mouse button and I'm going to make it bigger than I need because the font that we're going to use isn't going to work perfect. So once that's set up, I'm going to type in all caps King, K-I-N-G. I'm going to press Control A, and I'm going to go ahead and change that to 72. Still not big enough, but at least it made it bigger. Now we run into the same problem. See that pink color? What that means is that it doesn't have the font installed. So right now it's looking for this century font, which is not installed. So I'm going to come up here and instead I'm going to go ahead and choose Arial. I'm going to do Arial Black. It's very similar to the Helvetica font and then I can click away. Now I wanna make this bigger, but before I do that, I'm gonna zoom in. And with that thing selected, see they've got these symbols down here. Be careful with these, because that rotates, that changes the size, that links to another text box. So be careful, that's why I zoomed in. I want it to be the double-headed arrow, but not the hook arrow, the little like curved. I want it to be the diagonal. If I do this and I double click, what it will do, if I did it correctly, it will shrink the text frame to be exactly the same size as the font. All right. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and line this up here closer towards the top. Keeping in mind, I'm keeping it lined up on this outside line. That's why we set up the columns. Now I'm going to move it to where it's got the double headed arrow at a diagonal. Now, before I press with the mouse, you really pay attention to this, press the control key and the shift key and keep both of those keys held down. If you're on a Mac, do command and shift. Now, with both of those keys still held down, now press with your mouse on that corner and start to drag. What this will do is that will 
set it up to where uh, you've got it scaling the text and the frame. Now notice with the frame, there's this little bit of a gap there. So I'm just gonna use my arrow key and I'm gonna nudge that backwards. You can see it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty darn similar. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the Alt or the Command key with this thing still selected. See, it turns into a double-headed arrow. This is gonna let me duplicate it. Now I'm gonna highlight inside of there and I'm gonna type in all caps Kong. But notice what happened, it ran out of space. So I'm gonna come down here to the bottom corner with my black arrow double-headed arrow at a diagonal, and I'm going to double-click. Now I'm going to come up to this bottom double-headed arrow again. Before I click with my mouse, Control or Command, Shift, then I click with my mouse and I start to drag. So I'm just going to scale this down. doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of resizing. All right, now I'm going to hold down the Alt key again, and I'm going to duplicate by dragging down. Going to make this a little bit larger and I'm going to change the font on this one. I'm going to change this to regular and I'm going to shrink that much smaller. I'm going to do like size 12. Nope. Let's go ahead and increase the size of that a little bit more. That looks about right. All right. Now I can click the black arrow I'm Going to drag that back to snap into place. I'm going to nudge that one over too, just so the things are lined up. All right, now I'm going to highlight inside of this frame. Actually, I take that back. Let's shrink this down. Let's make this frame about that big. What we're going to do is we're going to fill this with placeholder text, just like you did below. But the difference is now I'm going to highlight the text that's already there because I've changed the size. I'm going to go to type. I'm going to go all the way down here to the bottom and I'm going to do fill with placeholder text. All right, awesome. Now I'm going to click away with my black arrow and I need to do this revisit at the top. So I'm just going to take this, this one right here. I'm going to hold down the alt key or the option key and drag up. And then I'm going to hold down the control shift and then click with my mouse to shrink this down being careful not to flip it or else the word will go upside down and backwards which is not what i'm looking for just trying to get it to about the pink line it's across the top awesome then i'm going to click this middle white box to drag this out then i'm going to highlight inside of it going to type in the word revisit. I'm going to highlight all of it. So I just press control A. I'm going to hold down the alt key and start pressing with my right arrow while I have the alt or the command key held down. That will adjust the tracking. And again, the font's not exactly the same size, so it's not going to match up perfectly, but it'll get close. All right. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my mouse button down outside of here with the black arrow. I'm going to drag across all three. So that that's highlighting all of that except for the word revisit. I wanted to change the font color of all of this to white. So by I could have done it one at a time, but I'm lazy. I want to do this efficiently. So I'm going to click the T, double click on the T fill, put in zero for K, that's the black ink. Click OK, now it's white. All right, last thing to do on this one. I know I went through this pretty fast, so you may have to go back or slow it down, but if you run into problems, let me know. I'm gonna come over here to my layers and I'm going to unlock the rectangle. And then to select it without even clicking on the screen, if I click on this little dot right there, it'll select. So you can do the same thing with any of these. You can do revisit here. So it's kind of a cool way of using the layers. So I'm gonna choose the rectangle. I wanna change it back to a fill of gray. So I'm gonna come over here to the little hook arrow, swap it, click away, hit W, zoom out. And there is the title page. Now I'm, I'm realizing up here that is not lined up. So I'm gonna nudge 
little guy over. There we go. So now when you look at it, you've got the basic essential structure, especially when I turn off the template, the structure of what this document looks like. There's the grid lines. I just hit W on the keyboard to flip flop between preview and normal. So there's normal mode, which shows you all the guides and the, the frames. Then preview shows you what it would actually look like if it was printed out. All right, go ahead and save your document. And let's move on to the last piece where you'll be putting in the page number. And then we'll talk about how to do the screencast. And then we'll move on.